Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmosso at the 1916company.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for inquiring about availability, pricing, extra photos, condition, anything that comes to mind, reach out to tmosso at the 1916company.com. Today, we discuss the Patek Philippe Nautilus 7118-1A-011. This is the midsize steel Nautilus, and as you can see, things are a little bit different on the midsizer. For one thing, the size. If you measure it diagonally, that is roughly, I'd say, 1030 to 430, you get 35.2 millimeters, and is 8.8 .8 millimeters thick from lug to lug, measuring just the case, 38.2 millimeters. If you measure to the first link across the watch, the total horizontal distance across the wrist is more like 43.3 millimeters. Now on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it actually wears quite nice. Although this is described as a ladies, uh, men can and do wear this watch, and I would feel perfectly fine wearing a watch that's made of steel, fully mechanical, and has no set gems. This is a sports watch still, and you can see it'll fit underneath any kind of a cuff. If you've got a wrist smaller than 14 centimeters circumference and you can't wear the jumbo, wear this. Some might even prefer the look of a more discreet Patek Philippe that is not quite as large as a standard 5711, 3700, or 5811. And yes, easily slides under a cuff. Taking a look at the bracelet, it's exactly what you get on a standard Nautilus, only smaller. So the quality of the finish is unimpeachable. We have satin primary links, we have polished centers, a blending of the flow of the lug hoods in the case into the taper of the bracelet. You can see the outer face is satinated, but there's a polished bevel that runs off the lug hood and continues unimpeded down the bracelet. When Gerald Genta designed the Nautilus back in 1976, it was a purple patch of design for the prolific designer of watches and jewelry, and he saw himself as a jewelry designer first. So as with his prior Royal Oak, he wanted to create something that was like a bracelet that happened to have a timepiece attached. And so the Nautilus was born in 1976 on that basis, and it truly is like a bracelet you can wear that also tells time. The removable links here, you can see they are fixed by pins and sleeves. Patek has its reason, and that reason is Pin sleeves, unlike flathead screws, can't be stripped out and stranded in the links. They were doing a lot of worst case scenario repairs of bracelets at Patek. They decided to go back to this system. It's tougher to size the bracelet. You'll need a block and a punch rather than a screwdriver. But true to the claim, these cannot be stripped out and stranded in the links. We have a double fold deployment with a twin trigger release system. And you can see when it closes, we have the image of the Calatrava cross, which is the logo of the brand. You'll find it also on the rotor. You'll find it also on the crown. And about that crown, it's a push down crown. If you look on the Patek website now, everything is listed as a real down to 30 meters style 30 meters. But when this watch originally came out, it was listed as 60. So please understand you've got a bit of a buffer compared to what's actually listed on the website. It is, however, not a screw-down crown. It is a push-down crown, so a bit different from a 57 or 5811. The case features winglets, and you can see you have a case back, a mid-case, and then the bezel with the winglets. All of it screws together to cinch down and achieve water resistance. We have a rounded polygonal bezel, but unlike the Royal Oak, which had a rounded octagon outboard, but then was circular, inner bezel, crystal, and dial, on the Nautilus, the outer bezel, the inner bezel, the crystal, and the dial all have the same shape, which has often led me to feel like the Nautilus was a more fully realized second pass at the design of the Royal Oak. So maybe just a little bit more coherent. Now you can see that this is a well-loomed watch. But when you take a look at the dial, not only do we have a fume fade from a sort of light brown, bronze, metallic to dark, but the striations of the standard Nautilus here become a waveform with irregular width and undulations, like you're looking at the waves as they toss atop the sea, or perhaps the rolling seabed and the sand on it. We have different shapes for the indices, the numeral and the hands, than you'll find on a 57 or 5811. And like all movements with the 324 caliber, we don't exactly have a hacking system, but a little bit of back pressure can stall out the second sand if you do want to synchronize to a reference time. And then there is an intermediate position if you want to quick set the date, so it does have a quick set function. The latest versions of this watch now have the 26330, but the one you're looking at right here has the 324. Popping open the reverse side, you can see that caliber 324. Nicely finished, 
Patek movements always are. There's a little bit of glue from a previous application of a sticker on this case back, so don't hold that against the brand. We have unidirectional winding with ceramic bearings for an efficient winding system, 45 hour power reserve, 4 hertz beat rate. We have a free sprung Gyromax style balance, Patek's long-time engineering innovation that first implemented in the 50s. We have an anti-magnetic silicon Spiromax hairspring, and then this is a 29 joule movement adjusted in a chronometer beating six positions. Chronometers are adjusted in five, this is adjusted in six. We have mirrored anglage on the edge of the bridges, stripes linear on the bridges, circular on the rotor, engine turning on the rotor center, the click wheel as well as the base plate in several different sizes, polished locating pegs to place bridges on base plate below, engine turning on the base plate and all screw heads black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. Reach out to Team also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.